Okay, this is MAT 175, Lesson 9, Section 2.5, Graphic Techniques with uh, Transformations. And uh, in the past, we had a quiz on the parent graphs, such as x squared, x cubed, square root, different functions, um, inverse functions and that. And so now we're going to take those parent graphs and we're going to apply them to transformations. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to recognize the graph and start with the parent graph. So here, any function, whether it's a linear equation, quadratic, cubic, square root, cube root, no matter what it is, you start with that function and if you add a certain number of units to it, k units, or in this case, k is you know, positive, or k is plus 1, k minus 1, or f of x minus k. If it's f of x plus k, you're going to raise the graph by k units. So you start with your parent graph, and then you, let's say we had x squared plus 2, you're going to start from the origin at the vertex at 0, 0, and you're going to go up two spaces. So we're going to add k units from our function, whatever that is, f of x. If it's a function such as, let's say, x cubed minus, let's say, 3, then you're going to start at your quadra uh, your cubic with the center at 0, 0, and then you're going to move that down. All points are going to move down k units. So let's see what uh, we have. Also, if we have in parentheses, for example, x plus one, for example, the graph will shift to the left one space. If it's, let's say, f of x minus, let's say, three parentheses cubed, well, you know, you have a cube that you're going to shift, and when you have a minus inside, you're going to shift it to the right. So the graph actually shifts to the opposite direction that you have the sign is inside the parentheses. So you're going to shift to the right, you know, if it's x plus minus 3, rather, parentheses cubed, then it'll shift to the right 3 units, and so on. Alright, now let's say we're starting with our parent graph of x squared, so that's a parabola. And we want to use transformations to uh, come up with the graph for g of x is x squared plus 3. Alright, so we start with, here's our parent graph, a parabola at 0, 0. So when x is positive 1, put positive 1 into x squared, you get 1 squared, and you get positive 1 out. So that's what this is here. If you put 2 in here, for uh, x squared, well, 2 squared is 4, so this would be 2, 4. And then negative 1 squared is positive 1, and negative 2 squared, you're going to get positive 4. So this is your parent graph, that's what you start with. Well, you don't have to do all these. The main thing is that you have to list the point, 0, 0. And now you want to know where does that point go. And so you have your parabola, and since you're going to go at x squared plus 3, you're going to shift up 1, 2, 3 spaces. Now your vertex is at 0, 3. So now when x is 0, y is at 3. When x is at 4, at, uh, at when x is negative 1, rather, you put negative 1 in here. Well, negative 1 squared is positive 1, and you get 4 out. So here's 1, 4. So instead of 1, 1, you're at 1, 4. So that's shifted up three spaces. And so for uh, 2, you get 2 squared is 4. Well, instead of it being a 2, 4, you're going to add another three units to that, and you get 2, 7. And so the whole sh graph shifts up three spaces. Okay, well, let's try x squared minus 4. Well, what do you think the graph is going to do this time? Start with our parabola, and you should have said that it shifts down four spaces. And 
now our vertex is at 0. Instead of our vertex being at 0, 0, now our vertex is at 0, negative 4. And this is true whether it's an x squared or an x cubed or, or anything like that. Okay, so if it was x, squ x cubed minus 4, you'd have your cube graph, and that, that would shift down four spaces as well. So it's really important that you recognize what your parent graph looks like because that's your starting point. And then you're just going to shift it from there. Okay, now when you have a negative out front of the x, then whether it be in front of the parentheses or in front of x squared or x cubed, what you're going to do is you're going to reflect about that, that graph about the x-axis and basically what you're doing is you're flipping it about the x-axis. If the negative is inside, like inside parentheses negative x, close parentheses squared, or, or negative x parentheses cubed, or, or square root, then you're reflecting it about the y-axis. Well, let's see what that looks like. Okay, here's our parent graph, x squared. All right, so now in parentheses, we have here x minus 2, close parentheses, squared. So that's doing what this is telling you right here. The y equals to f plus x plus h is telling you that. So if we had x is 0, y is going to be just negative, it'll just be negative 2 squared and you get 4 out. But at negative 2, x is negative 2, this would be negative 2, negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4 squared, you're going to be 16 out. So here's your original graph. And so we see that when x is negative 2, you're actually, it's like you're adding negatives. And so it actually shifts it to the right you end up with negative 4 squared and, and then you get a positive 16 out. Okay, so uh, this is the original x squared and this is what you end up with. So when x is positive 2, you put 2 in here, 2 minus 2, that's 0. So when x is 2, Here's 2, x is 2, y is at 0. Whereas before when x is 2, y was at 4. So, and now if, if x is, let's say, 4, well with the original graph, y would have been up here at 16. But here when x is 4, you're going to substitute 4 in there, 4 minus 2 is 2 squared is 4. So now with the parent graph, when x is 4, y is 4. So it all ends up shifting the graph to the right with the x minus 2 parentheses squared. Now if it was x minus 2 parentheses cubed, it would be a cube graph that would shift to the right. But again, we start with a vertex and we're shifting to the right two spaces. Okay. Now here's x plus 4 parentheses squared. Now, which way is that going to shift? We have a parabola, right? And you should have said it shifts to the left. How many spaces? It shifts to the left, four spaces. So here's our parent graph, the black one. And it shifts that vertex, one, two, three, four spaces. So now we draw our parabola from there. Okay, so... If if it's inside the parentheses, you're going to, if it's plus, you shift to the left. If it's minus, you shift to the right. If it's outside of the parentheses, you're going to shift it plus is up, minus is down. All right, now here we have x plus 3 parentheses squared minus 5. Now here we have two transformations. Let's start with the inside, x plus 3. We're going to have start with a quadratic because it's squared, and we're going to shift that which way? You should have said to the left. 
three spaces. Okay, now, once we shift it to the left, three spaces, okay, there it is. Here's the original graph. Here's our parent graph. We shift it to the left three. Now, what's that minus five going to make this vertex do? You should have said that it shifts down five. So it shifted one, two, three spaces to the left, and one, two, three, four, five spaces down. So it's easiest if you look at starting with the vertex at the origin at zero, zero, like this, and then shifting that vertex and working it from there. And the main thing that I'm looking at is where is that vertex at now? I'm not so worried so much about the other points, but the vertex is the one thing that is the most critical. Okay, graph functions using compressions and stretching. Now we have a number times our function, and that number is positive. We're going to multiply that number by the, uh, each coordinate on the graph. When you have that number is greater than 1, you're going to get what's called vertical stretching. It's going to make it like more look it's going to make it look more narrow but what's really happening is the coordinates are vertically stretching in relation to the x axis and then when we get like a fraction in between 0 and 1 then you get what's called vertical compression it's like the graph is like pressing compressing down in relation to the x axis all right and then when the da is inside here you get horizontal compression and stretching, but we're not going to worry so much about that. That You're going to see more of that when we get to the trigonometric functions. So we're not going to mess with that so much right now. All right, well, here's an abs apparent graph. What is it? Absolute value function. What does it look like? You should have said it looks kind of like a V. <coughs> okay, and now here we have two times the absolute value of x. So we're gonna this is gonna make the graph vertically stretch this two outside like that. Well if you put zero, here's our original graph. Put zero in right you get zero out. Put negative one in here you get positive one out. Negative two in you get positive two out. Put positive one in you get positive one out, positive two in you get positive two out. No problem. Now, when you hit, because of this 2 outside here, you get this multiplier effect. <clears throat> so now, instead of negative 1 in, and you get instead of getting a negative 1 out, now you're going to multiply 2 times that. So now here, instead of being here at negative 1, 1, now you're at negative 1, 2. And negative 2, instead of getting negative 2 out, now you're going to multiply 2 times that, and you get 4 out. So you get this vertical stretching in relation to the x-axis and the curve, or in this case, the absolute value uh, lines. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, here we have g of x. We have our parent graph as absolute value function again. And we have g of x equals to 1 half x. So this is going to cause the absolute value graph to vertically compress. So we see here that, of course, when you put 0 in, you get 0 out for either graph. Negative 1 in, you get negative 1 out. But with this, it's easier if we look at two functions, you know, values of 2s. Because when we put negative 2 in here, right, we get a positive 2, but then positive 2 and negative 2 is cancel, and you get 1. So here's your original graph, negative 2, 2, for negative 2, 2. But then with this g of x is 1 half, you're going to put negative 2 in, but now you're going to take half of that. So it vertically compressed. It's compressing down on the x-axis. So you get that, and it's vertical, because the space in between, the vertical space in between is vertically compressing from the parent graph, from the original
original graph to to the new graph, the one half at, um, absolute value of x. So you get that vertical compression. Okay. And now we're going to take a look at some other graphs such as the square root of x. <coughs> and here we have um, 2 times x. So here, here's the original graph. And what we did is we put them in the calculator. And when we put in the x over 2, then um, what's happening is you're getting <coughs> horizontal stretching. And this 2x here, this is horizontal compression. We're not, like I said, we're not going to get so much into that until we get to the trigonometric, when we get to trigonometry graphs. Alright, so that's some examples of that. And more on horizontal compression. Well, we're not going to get to trig graphs until we get after the midterm, but that's kind of like what that looks like. Don't worry about that graph right now. When we get to, um, you know, it's going to be a while before we get to that, but um, you'll see it. This makes sense when we get to that point. Don't worry about that. We're not going to cover that right now, but that's just kind of a preview. So this is a good example of horizontal compression. Here's the parent graph for this um, function. Actually, it's more like a sine curve like that. And then it compresses in in relation to the y-axis. So we'll get more into that later. Graph functions using reflections about the x-axis and y-axis. Okay, here's the negative outside of the x squared. So we have our original parabola and then it flips or it reflects about the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. So if we start with zero, right, zero in, zero out, negative, there's no such thing as negative zero. So with the parent graph we put in one out, one in, we get one out. But when there's a negative here, when we put 1 in, 1 squared is 1, but you got negative, so it's going to make it a negative 1. So here, instead of being 1, 1, it's 1, negative 1. And then same thing for 2. Put 2 in, this will be 2 squared. You're not squaring the negative because it's the 2's in parentheses, not the negative. So just the 2 gets squared, not the negative. 2 squared is 4, but it's negative, so it's a negative 4. So here, instead of being at 2 positive 4, it's at 2 negative 4. So you get that, ref you get that reflection about the x-axis because of this negative. Okay, and so we get that reflection about the x-axis x -axis of the graph with the function y equals to f of x. Now this is an excellent example of what happens when there's a negative inside, in this case the radical, you get that reflection about the y-axis. Now normally you would think, well, we can't have a negative inside the radical. That's true. But if we put a negative 1 in here, then that would make this minus a negative 1, and make that would make it a positive. But if we put a positive 1 in there, now that that's going to be a negative and a 1, so that makes a negative 1, and that's undefined. You, you get an imaginary number, so you can't have it. So that's why you get this uh, reflection about the y-axis. Instead of being at, no, they don't show, instead of being at 1, you put x, one, x is 1 in there, it can't work, but x negative 1 will work. So that's why we get that reflection about the y-axis. And that's when we get the negative inside the radical. Find the function that is finally graphed about the following three transformations applied to the graph y equals to the absolute value of x. Okay, shifts left two units. If it shifts left, what kind of equation will we put in there? Well, if it's left, it has to be, first of all, it has to be inside the absolute value, just like with um, when we looked at the x squared, like this, it's the same thing. 
but instead of parentheses squared, it's just absolute value. So, we're going to use the absolute value graph, that's our parent graph, and we're going to put left two units, so that's going to be x plus, print absolute value x plus two inside the absolute value. And that's going to make it shift to the left. Shifts up three units. Now what's that equation going to look like? You should have put absolute value of x and then plus three outside. Okay, and what we're doing is we're building on from the x plus two and we're adding three to that. And now we're taking this equation and we're saying reflecting about the y-axis. Alright, so what happens is what you're doing here is you're putting that negative x, that negative with the x inside because it's reflecting about the y-axis. Replace x by with negative x. Okay. And so that's going to make it shift. Here it is. Well, if it's easiest, I think it's easiest if you factor that negative out, and that would make it a negative x minus 2, parentheses, inside the absolute value. All right. Now, here it's kind of hard to tell from this graph, but you're going to, what you have here is a, um, you're going to have your reciprocal graph and you have your asymptotes and the vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, they crisscross right here at zero, zero. And you have your branches from there. And so now, what you're going to do here is you're going to, here you have your three over x. Now this x minus two, that's like the parentheses. Okay, that's going to make it shift which way? You should have said to the right, two spaces, because it's like acting like it's in parentheses. And now what about this plus one? So here's the vertical asymptote, here's the horizontal asymptote. Now it's making that crisscross, it's made it shift to the right, two spaces. Now where's the crisscross going to shift with this plus one? You should have said up one. So here's the vertical or the horizontal asymptote here's a vertical asymptote they crisscross right here shift two to the right up one and so there's where our crisscross vertical and horizontal asymptotes are at now so we don't have a vertex like we do with the x squared and, and, and that but we do have the reference point of starting at the origin where the two asymptotes cross at Okay, so there's our transformation for our reciprocal graph. Okay, now here we have that 1 minus x. So, um, all right, first thing is if we factor the negative out, we're going to end up with a negative, parentheses, x minus 1. So that's going to make it shift to the right. So here's the square root of x, that's the parent graph. And then you have that x plus 1, that's what I was telling you about. If you factor out that negative, you're going to get a parentheses negative x plus 1. It's going to make it shift to the left. And what they did is they made it shift, they reflected it about the y-axis from there. Well, I think it kind of makes it hard to see why would you have x plus 1 there. But if you factor the negative out, make this negative, and then parentheses x plus 1, then you can, or x minus 1 rather, then you can see that's going to reflect and then shift to the right. And then it's going to shift up too. And that concludes this video. We'll do more of these in class and, and it'll make more sense to you there. Okay, thank you and have a good day.